all have those days, weeks, months when life feels out of balance, when our to-do list never gets smaller and being successful feels constantly out of reach. The beginning of a new year can feel especially difficult. Goals have been set, the pressure is on and fighting to keep up the pace can feel like a daily struggle. But over the last few years, I found a formula that quiets the noise, brings me balance and makes me feel successful every day. I've learned the power of the small things because as we know, often the little things aren't little at all. Compounded, they are everything. So today I'm sharing my habits, the tiny things I do every day to help me stay on track when I start to feel a little lost. 10 daily habits that changed my life and I believe they could help change yours too. Happy New Year guys. I realised last week I didn't actually say Happy New Year. So Happy New Year. In last week's video we talked all about how to set productive and effective goals and how to set a really clear vision of what we want our new year to look like. But really achieving these goals is a direct manifestation of our habits. The little actions that we take every day are what will dictate the productivity of our year. I have been doing a ton of research on how to actually achieve goals when you set them. And a large part of my corporate job is also focused on how to change behaviors and how to maintain behavior change sustainably over the long term. So I'm gonna try and use some of what I know works plus some of the research that I've done to build a daily routine that's gonna work for me and hopefully work for you too so we can smash all of our goals for the new year. So if you're already starting to feel some of the pressure around achieving your new year's resolutions or your new year's goals then me too. Stephen Bartler actually did a podcast a couple of weeks ago on breaking bad habits. In it he says that a recent study shows that of those who set new year's resolutions only nine percent have achieved them by the end of the year. Nine percent! Honestly, that is such a depressing statistic, but he did then reference renowned psychologist John Norcross, who has found that those of us that set New Year's resolutions or New Year's goals really specifically are 10 times more likely to be successful than those who want to achieve something in the new year, but don't necessarily set a formal goal. And I don't know about you, but that makes me so optimistic about this year, guys. That basically tells us that just by setting clear intentions, we're already way ahead and way more likely to achieve our goals. So. How do we actually go about changing behaviors so that we can have a super productive, healthy and happy year this year? For me, there's a really big difference between having a to-do list and having habits. What we want this year are habits. We want those things that are gonna work for us on autopilot that we don't need motivation for, that we don't need discipline for. They work for us in the background of our minds for free to make us healthy, happy, and productive. For me, the most practical and key concept that I found that works when it comes to changing my own behavior over the last few years has been habit stacking. If you have read the viral book, Atomic Habits, you'll know what I'm talking about. If not, I really recommend going and reading it. But really habit stacking is all about layering habits on top of one another or layering a new habit on top of something that you already do on autopilot. And essentially the concept dictates that when we do things sequentially, one after the other, where we're building on things we already do, they're way more likely to happen. And honestly, I have found that to be so, so true. So today I'm gonna run you through the 10 daily habits that I have already built into a bit of a routine. You know, I'm always super honest with you guys. Some of these things are things I already do on autopilot and I would call them actual habits. Some of these 10 habits are things that aren't actually habits for me yet. I want them to be habits. So I've stacked them amongst the things that I do already do on autopilot in the hopes that by the end of the year, I will be doing these 10 things daily on autopilot as real true habits every single day. And honestly, some of these habits have already truly changed my life and I cannot wait to see how much my life could change if I managed to do all 10 of these every single day for the whole of this year. My very, very favorite habit, which I absolutely swear by and that I've definitely nailed, comes at the very end of the list. So I'm also hoping that because my absolute favorite habit of them all is at the end, it's gonna help me progress through the list every single day to get to my very favorite habit. Okay, so let's get started with the 10 daily things that I'm gonna try and do every single day this year. And I honestly think they could be a game changer for you as well. Let's start at the very beginning. A good day begins the night before. In practice, this means nail your night routine, nail your evening routine. I cannot tell you how much perfecting my evening routine 
changed my life. To me, the entire purpose of a perfect evening routine is to aid adequate sleep. It's how do you wind down, reset yourself, enjoy your evening so that you can go to sleep peacefully and you can get a really good solid amount of sleep. If you haven't read the book Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker, you absolutely should. It will change your whole perception on how insanely important sleep is. On very dramatic levels, the less you sleep, the shorter your lifespan, which really is all the information we really need. And really a good question to ask yourself when it comes to if you're getting enough sleep is if I didn't set an alarm in the morning, would I wake up? I have honestly been increasingly working on not needing an alarm to get up. And I'm honestly getting there. Like I, I always wake up now a couple of minutes before my alarm actually goes off. It means I know my body's had what it needs in order to set me up for the day. I absolutely love my sleep. I prioritize it so highly. To aid sleep, as well as nailing your evening routine, I would also really, really recommend a Lumi alarm clock. Waking up in the depths of winter when it's so dark outside to even if it's artificial bright sunlight is so lovely. It's such a nice and more natural way to wake up and it makes me feel so much more wide awake than waking up in the dark with a horrible alarm. So habit number one, nail your night routine and get good quality sleep to set you up right for your day. The second habit is such an easy, simple one that we can all do and that is making the bed every morning. To me, this is such an autopilot one. Without fail, every morning I wake up and make my bed. I honestly can't get into bed now unless it's been made. In the evening, if for some insane reason I haven't made the bed, I need to come into my bedroom make the bed and then like go and brush my teeth so I can then get into a, a freshly made bed. Honestly, it makes me feel like I've accomplished something straight off the bat. It makes me feel like the type of person I want to be. Like organized, productive, it ticks all the boxes for me. It sets me up so well for my day. If I leave my bedroom and everything is feeling chaotic and cluttered, I really do feel like that impacts my mindset for the day. It sounds so simple and so stupid, but I swear it makes a difference to the rest of your day. When our eyes register daylight, cortisol is released helping us to feel alert and ready for our day. This also sets off a timer for when melatonin will be secreted, which helps us sleep in the evening. If we remain in darkness in the mornings, there isn't enough light to trigger the cortisol and melatonin system. A delayed cortisol pulse has been linked to anxiety, depression, and even high blood pressure. So if you can get outside as soon as possible in the morning, I believe it is one of the best things we can do for our health, especially during these darker months. We all know how good we feel when we're well hydrated, so my two main tips for drinking more water throughout the day are 1. Make it special. Add ice, add lemon and drink it out of a cute cup. I swear it makes a difference. And 2. If you work from a desk, have a jug of water next to you throughout the day. It's a visual reminder to keep your glass topped up and it always keeps me hydrated even when I have back-to-back -back meetings. Habit number five is such a nice one. Habit number five is all about practicing gratitude and practicing gratitude specifically as early in the day as possible. At the moment, I'm in a bit of a habit of practicing gratitude in the evening. One of the ways in which I'm trying to nudge myself to do it more in the morning is I've got a daily planner that's got a section in it for gratitude. Again, I tend to journal in the evening, which is why I then practice gratitude in the evening. Morning routines in the winter are hard. I'm gonna share a super easy winter morning routine soon because Honestly, I just can't keep up with these super long, get up super early winter morning routines. I can't do it. I, in the winter, I just can't do it. My body clock tells me it's the middle of the night when it's dark outside. So I'm gonna post one of those soon. And maybe in that, I will try and journal first thing in the morning because yeah, I really need to build that habit. I think it's such a good thing to do. But at the very least, when I get my planner out to run through my day, if I can just write down one thing that I'm grateful for, I know it will put me in more of a positive mood for the rest of my day. Because to me, having a sense of gratitude for where you are now is kind of acknowledging that you got yourself there. Having gratitude for your friends or your family or the space that you live in or your body and what it can do for you, whatever it is that you feel grateful for, you've helped shape that. So that really links into everything I was saying in the last video around, I think the best foundation for achieving your goals is feeling like you're already successful. It's feeling like you're already smashing it and you are capable of achieving whatever it is that you wanna set out to achieve. And gratitude is such a good way to say to yourself, I am super capable. I've already achieved all these great things. And I'm so grateful for my life. And now let's build on it because there's so much more that I want to do and that I want to feel grateful for next year. Habit number six is such a huge one for me and has transformed my ability to keep a clean and tidy home. Do small tasks immediately. 
it takes less than five minutes, do it now. This takes practice, but over time it means you significantly reduce the number of those days where you feel like your space is out of control and you need to spend hours tidying and cleaning to get it back on track. I promise Marie Kondo is right, a tidy space is a tidy mind. I'm calling habit number seven time blocking, but really it's bigger than that. How do we manage stress and how do we manage when things start to pile on top of us and that to-do list grows and grows and grows and how do we crack through it without wanting to literally run and hide? In last week's video, we talked through all my many notebooks and how I use each of them to run my life. What we didn't talk about was my calendar and how I run my daily calendar. And to me, time blocking is the core principle that sits at the center of how I run that calendar. So in my world, I've got two key principles that apply when I am using time blocking to run my life. The first one I'm pretty sure I stole from Grace Beverly. In her book, Working Hard, Hardly Working, she talks about time blocking and how she segments her to-do lists into three categories. If I quote this wrong, I'm sorry, it's how I now apply it, but I'm pretty sure it's how she applies it in her book as well. But basically, if it takes less than five minutes to do, as we just talked about in habit number six, that becomes like a quick tick super easy win, quick win task that we can do super quickly and get it out of the way. The second column is 30 minutes or less, which are kind of your to-dos. And then anything that's 30 minutes plus, that's like a longer, chunkier, creative piece of work. And I then basically will organize my calendar by scheduling time to plow through the 30 minutes or less and scheduling time to plow through the longer creative tasks. So the 30 minutes or less to me is like writing certain emails that need a little bit more thought put into them than ones that are a quick reply. And the second principle that I apply to my time blocking is putting all the stuff that needs the most of my brain power at the beginning of my day. So we're all different. For me, I focus way better in the morning is when I've got the most brain power. So I try and focus all of my content development and my research tasks in the morning. And I try and have all of my meetings in the afternoon. For me, I tend to flag as the afternoon goes on and it's much easier for me to be able to feed off other people's energy in the afternoons to help me stay focused and honestly then it just means that my whole day feels productive because I can concentrate in the morning and in the afternoon by planning activities around my personal peaks and troughs of the day. If you want more information on time blocking or like how to organize your days and get through your to-do lists and tasks when life feels stressful and overwhelming definitely read Working Hard Hardly Working. I thought it was brilliant. It gave me so many helpful tips. Truth be told, this one isn't a habit for me yet, but I know how good moving my body every single day makes me feel, and I know how good it is for my health. So whether it is a stretch, a workout from home, a trip to the gym, or just getting a walk outside and some fresh air, and trying to get my 10,000 steps a day, I am gonna be prioritizing trying to make daily movement one of my core habits this year. Ever since I heard Tim Spector talking about the benefits of a thriving microbiome, I have one simple goal, to make all of my meals as colorful as possible. The more color, the more nutrients. So whether it's cooking at home or eating out, I really want to create a strong habit of always having a colorful plate this year. We are now finally at the end of the day and the end of the list, which means habit number 10 for me is rest. Rest is so important, whether it's productive rest where we're really able to switch off, meditate, unwind and really recharge our batteries. Or to be honest, I think we should feel less guilty about super unproductive rest where we just sit down and scroll on our phones and stare at the television for hours. I think just incorporating rest where you step away, you don't care about your goals, you don't care about progress, you don't care about productivity, I think is so, so important. And honestly, I am a bit of a pro at rest, but I have started to notice lately that I feel like I'm resting so that I can be productive again because I've got that mindset in my head. So I'm setting myself the target for this year to really try and focus on when I rest, I rest, I actually do switch off and I'm not trying to rest for something productive. For me this evening, that is gonna involve sticking a pizza in the oven, opening a bottle of wine, and watching some kind of classic rom-com. Maybe you've got mail, it's one of my favorites. I've still got all of the Christmas decorations up. Usually I literally cannot wait to get it down when the new year starts and I'm ready for like a fresh clean space. This year I'm just absolutely loving having the tree. I don't know why, I'm like so sad to part with it, but I am gonna get rid of it over the next few days. So I'm gonna soak up having all of my Christmassy decor around me for one final evening. To me, that is one of the most perfect evenings of rest. So I hope you guys all prioritize rest as much as you possibly can in 2023 whilst you're still going after your goals. It's so important that we don't hit burnout too soon. I hope you found this video helpful. Have the best week guys. I can't wait to see you in the next one. Bye guys.